Hi everybody, this is Craig with UR Comp. It is my honor and pleasure to welcome today O'Neill Cosa, CEO of Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line. O'Neill, thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Well, O'Neill, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line, what you think makes it different and unique from other cruise experiences people may have. <clears throat> sure. Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line is a unique cruise line because what we do, no one else does. So I think that fits the term unique very well. Uh, we are the only cruise line that operates short cruises. And by short, I mean two night, three day cruises out of Port of Palm Beach uh, going to Grand Bahama, Bahamas. Uh, there's no one else offering a cruise of that duration. And what differentiates us further is our cruise and stay offering wherein you can go with us on a cruise uh, we can arrange a hotel for you you can stay in the bahamas for two four or six nights and whenever you decide to get back on the ship you come back on the ship so so which is a very very unique offering no one in the cruise industry does that so these are two main differentiating factors for us and what is uh, how that helps or how that creates a, a new stream of passengers for the cruise industry is that we we attract a lot of first timers and we attract a lot of people who are looking for a quick getaway. Our, our kind of marketing slogan is a getaway any day. I mean, you need to really plan too much in advance and you had a rough week or you had a great week, you want to just hop on a on the ship for two nights, go to Bahamas. You can't do that with anybody else. So, so we are we are definitely very appealing to two sectors of people: one who who haven't ever cruised, and or who want to add a short cruise to their Florida vacation. Let's say you're coming to Disney, or you're going to Miami for four nights. Add that add to that a seven night cruise. It gets pretty long. But if you're coming to Orlando for three, four nights, Miami for a couple of nights, and then you want to check the box or really want to get on a cruise ship, we are a perfect fit for that. A two night in a tour package. So these are these are mainly our differentiating factors and, and add to our uniqueness. I think it's genius because like we were talking about before the interview, I'd never heard of this anywhere. And one of the complaints that I've had from just friends, ah, you know, cruising is cool, but my, I don't like that you only get to experience a city or a port for four or six hours. And what I love about what you guys offer is that you kind of take that away. If somebody wants to stay for a, a weekend or four days, you can do it. And you can say, I went to Bahamas, right? Because I stayed there for two days. And you can also say, I, I went on a cruise. Right. <laughs> Within four days, you have really seen the Bahamas and you also experienced the cruise. Yes, absolutely. And what I like about about your business model, too, is that you started with just one ship. So it was every other day it would leave from Palm Beach. And then rather, you, know, you got a second ship rather than put it in a different city. You said you made it so it's every day it's leaving from Palm Beach. It adds a ton of flexibility to your schedule and, and to the people in Florida that want to experience it. It's any day of the week they can hop on your ships. <laughs> Yeah, it fits, it fits right into our belief and philosophy of get away any day. So earlier on, it was like, hey, is the ship leaving on Friday or is it leaving on Saturday? Now you really don't have to worry about that. You say, okay, I don't have to think about it. I can go any day. So that is why we, we decided to kind of duplicate our service, and which basically means we have 365 departures a year. And uh, and given the size of our ships, this 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 will be very interesting for you or and your viewers. The amount of passengers that will cruise with us is more than probably what the world's largest ship carry cruise ship carries in a year. That's crazy. You're right. Because the turnaround, we generate like fifteen to sixteen hundred people every day. Yeah. That, no, that's fascinating. You're right. Because probably. A a small, medium-sized Southwest Airlines flight probably ends up carrying more people in a day than one of those giant. Exactly, because of the frequency. And even though our ships can go up to 1,800 people, uh, and what is what is even uh, something uh, that also stands out and is noticeable is given our size, uh, we are kind of 
bringing back that cruising experience that's kind of missing on a very large ship wherein you're kind of lost and in a maze of people and by no means I'm trying to downplay that that's great because new ships have a lot to offer but there is a segment of people who who want to be intimate who want their waiter to know them by name who want to know their fellow passengers and who don't want to get lost on a ship. So it's pretty appealing because of our size. And we have a lot of repeat passengers that come in and they meet each other. And so it's like an experience they kind of miss on the new, new modern, very large ships that they, they enjoy as well. Yeah, it makes a lot of, a lot of sense. And, and I guess that brings up another question that I'm just curious about, I know a lot of people that are watching this are probably curious about, is you uh, you guys didn't build these ships from scratch. You bought some, obviously, amazing ships. You put a lot of money into making them uh, better and, and able to service the modern, uh, the modern consumer. But I'm just curious, you know, you're the CEO. What is it like when you're going out and shopping for another ship that you're bringing in? Is there a ton of ships on the market? How do you decide which one you want to but, I mean, that whole process just seems fascinating to me. Well, there's not a ton of ships on the market because, as you know, cruise industry is heavily consolidated and 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 few larger players. But what is also happening is there's a generation of ships uh, that are kind of not fitting the brands that have kind of evolved and also that are kind of getting older for relative to the new builds you are having. So there is there is enough supply of those kind of ships. And we will see probably in the next three, four, five years, about 10 of them coming to the market. But what is challenging is like, given the consolidation, there's not a big market out there to absorb those ships. The smaller ships that are coming out or are, are available to be kind of available for other people there's still around 2,000 passengers. And there are not many operators who can operate a 2,000 passenger ship. Right. So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty decent supply and demand situation uh, from that perspective for us, that the supply is not very high, but the demand is not very high either. Right. So, so if you are in the industry, you would... Uh, you would know like, okay, we, we can expect these ships to be coming to the market or being offloaded. And there's a little bit of an ecosystem for that market, the brokers or the companies. Uh, and what happens in our industry is that the sales or the ships that come to the market, is, it doesn't happen overnight because your sales are generally well in advance, like as far as our, for an year or a year and a half. So if you have to sell a ship or offload a ship or buy a ship, it has to be a long process because the person or the company that is offloading the ship has to fulfill those cruises before they let it go. So it's like a decision that's made well in time, very well planned. Okay, we're going to offload the ship, but we're going to keep running her for a year or so. And this is the date when you can take over. And that allows us the opportunity to absorb it, to market it well in advance, and also allows the opportunity to the seller to fulfill all the cruises they have sold. So if you're in the trade, you would you would know a little bit of that and plan accordingly. Understood. Yeah, because it's not like a car where you just put the for sale by owner sign on the side of the ship. And... Exactly. And, and as I said, the industry is not that large. So and it's public knowledge and information. Typically, I would know what kind of a ship fits my trade. And maybe even if it's not for sale, you would go and approach the cruise line or, or, the, or the ship owner, hey, can we do something? So it's, it's a very close-knit trade that, because there's not many people who are doing this. Apart from us, there are not many small operators you would, you would find managing this size of uh, business. Well, and so what's the alternative if, say, Costa or Carnival couldn't 
sell one of those ships, I mean, does it go to scrap metal or so, is? Yes. So that is what happens uh, many times that ships head to the scrap yards and, and they're still valuable. Even, even in scrap, cruise ships could be worth $10 million. Wow. <laughs> But I, I imagine that's ten million is probably less than you paid for either of your fine ships. So. Well, absolutely, because when you again the cruise lines or any ship owner doesn't really send a ship to scrap till it it's kind of really at the tail end of its life. Uh, typically, the economic life of a cruise ship is about fifty years, forty five to fifty years, if maintained well. So, and around thirty years is when you start seeing. Uh, the first signs that okay we can sell this ship because obviously if, if someone wants to buy or someone has a use for it he wants a decent economic life balance on, on that asset and are there banks out there this is probably way out in left field you know business type question but are there banks out there that will finance the building of a ship and Finance it over 30, 40 years. Oh, absolutely. The shipbuilding market is, uh, is extremely well structured because let's not forget, cruise ships is a branch of the shipbuilding industry, even though it's sophisticated and, and very, very peculiar and unique, like relative to cargo ships, but, but the shipbuilding industry is massive. Uh, cargo ships, I mean tankers, freighters, container ships. So this is a, there is a very well developed ecosystem for for financing and for trading the ship ship new ships of course new building industry. Now you touched on a couple points that makes me want to dive into your background. Like one that the ecosystem is really probably small when you think about how many players there are in the in the market and probably at the top there's just a few players and. Um, and then you talked about just how the shipbuilding building market, cruise ships, is just part of the, you know, merchant service and all that. Both of which uh, lead us to your background. So you've got a fascinating background. Um, why don't you tell us about? Because I know you you started on the merchant side, and then you went to another big cruise line before landing here. So if you don't mind, walk us through your background. Yeah, I I've been dabbling around the cruise industry in uh, various roles, and. Uh, it kind of just fell in place and kind of not really planned that way. <laughs> I started my career out at sea as a cadet and uh, worked on the freighters for a few years. I'm a merchant marine graduate. And uh, then eventually I ended up on cruise ships with Royal Caribbean. Uh, and that's where I got involved in their first large new building program, which was the Voyager series. Voyager of the Seas, and uh, like I was a first officer with them. And uh, then <clears throat> after some time, I wanted to do something else. So I, and I was useless on land. <laughs> so all, I, all I could do is drive a ship. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got some advice that I should go and, and get, a, get an MBA or something if I, if I want to knock some doors to do something. So I ended up in Europe, Netherlands. I, I I got my MBA there at RSM, which is a very good school. And it just so happened that one of our visiting lecturers was was the CEO of a very large bank in Europe that financed ships. And it was intriguing for them because they had not uh, been financing cruise ships, and they were financing every other ship and every other plane and every other train. And they wanted to dabble into the cruise ship industry, and it was just meant to be, I guess, uh, that I was there and he was there. And by the time I was done, I started working for the DVB Bank, which is one of the largest asset financiers globally. And, and I worked with them for about six, seven years, and we had an amazing run. Because we, we started looking at cruise lines and cruise ships that were middle market and didn't actually fit the box for a lot of banks. And what would be, do you have any examples that maybe a, a, somebody in the US market would recognize for the middle market? Yes, like for example, when Oceania cruises started and uh, 
they chartered the first ship and when they really acquired it, we were the first bank to provide financing to them. And another example would be Lindblad Expedition Cruisers. Silver Sea was a client. Uh, then there were a lot of ferry companies. And, and obviously we did business with the large uh, cruise lines as well, but those were mostly syndicated large facilities wherein you take a piece of the loan. Nothing, nothing very peculiar. But what, what was peculiar was to finance someone like Lindbad Expedition, which was like 100 to $200 million bracket. And the big banks wouldn't want to finance them because they're too small and it's not like a real corporate credit. And the small banks didn't understand their business. And what also happens with the cruise industry is if you approach a typical lender, he'll say, oh, well, you're not a hotel, so I cannot finance you. And then you go to a ship lender and he's like, you're not really a ship, you're a hotel. <laughs> 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 that's that's kind of conventional wisdom, right? So, so, so we 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 were very successful in that market because there was nobody else, and a lot of these companies, uh, you know, we, we cruise lines, small cruise lines, which are big names today, like Oceania, Silver Sea, Lindblad. I mean, uh, we kind of saved the day for them, and especially when 9/11 happened and the finance market was really bad and nobody would lend. So that's where I got the experience of the industry from a different perspective, like from the money side, finance side, structuring side, asset side. And eventually I, you know, after working for DVB, we also ran a private equity fund for investments again into the cruise industry. We did very well. And uh, then I thought it was time to kind of do something else. And I started dabbling in cruise ships and started a cruise line in, uh, in Indian Ocean, that which I sold. And then finally, there was an opportunity with this company in 2016. And uh, I partnered up with Kevin Sheen, who, who's our chairman, and his son, who's also our president and works closely with the cruise line. And uh, uh, we have had an amazing run since then. What? So that's fascinating. So you were, you had obviously looking at everybody's books, doing these loans. You probably saw, you know, obviously you saw how profitable or how great of a business cruise lines could be if you said, shoot, I want to, I don't want to just finance these. I want to jump in it myself. So you actually launched or you bought your own cruise line in the Indian Ocean? Is that? Yes. Yeah. I started as a total new startup and uh, we bought one of the ships that was actually an easy cruise ship. Uh, it was a new concept started in Mediterranean, like we're in, you know, like low cost airline kind of a thing, low cost cruising. So, and Indian Ocean had an opportunity because nobody was cruising there. So, so that's where I kind of wanted to back on the first mover opportunity. And, uh, and that is where starting a cruise line kind of at least enabled me to learn a little bit more, uh, which was out of the box from, you know, banking and operating a ship or being on a ship. So, so that's why I've kind of been around the ships for a long time. Wow. And then, so Bahamas Paradise, did you, um, cause I mean, what you guys are doing is the stay or the cruise and stay. I've never seen it before. Was that something that you've seen in other markets be successful and you said, all right, let's bring this to the U S or it was just something that, you know, you or your business partners thought like, all right, well, let's, let's try it out with one ship or how, how did this idea come? Cause when I heard about it, I never thought of it, but right away I reckon, you know, I recognize everyone I tell about it. It's like, that's genius. Why hasn't anybody done this before? Uh, it's again, if you want to stick to simple cruising, you do what, what traditionally the industry does, cruise, go to four ports and come back. And it has been extremely successful. Uh, we acquired this company in 2016, but the model and the company existed prior to that. So we didn't really start it. But what we have done is we have taken it to a different level and kind of made, made it more cruise uh, industry centric rather than 
a ship doing a lot of things with no aim. So, so we are really focused on kind of cruise and stay and short cruising. Uh, I'm not aware of uh, any other place where this is being done, but just like you, you felt like this was interesting. That's what we felt that this is cool and this is unique and this this can be parlayed into something larger and something more, uh, you know, some can be streamlined into a better offering. We knew it was kind of there, but not there. But so we have been making changes and and to make it more customer friendly and to make it more appealing. And uh, and we really believe in this concept. I, I I totally believe that cruise and stay is a very unique proposition. I myself have done it a few times, and uh, it it felt different. I can tell you that much. Uh, uh, to 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 go on a ship and then get off and stay on in another country for two days or four days and then not go to an airport but have to a cruise port to to take the ship back uh, it's a different experience and uh, and and we are very very happy with the, uh, where we are and uh, we there's nothing on our ships that you would not find that you would expect on a cruise ship. A lot of our passengers are very pleasantly wowed and surprised once they come on board. As I said, we get a lot of first timers, so they really don't know what to expect. And even for experienced cruisers, uh, it's it's like I'm going on a two night cruise. My expectations are very low because it's just a getaway. But when they come on the ship, they see the spa, they see the casino, they see bars, they see shows in the theater. And they're like, oh my God, this is just like any other cruise I've taken, but I just can come and hop, hop, skip and cruise on this one rather than really planning a long vacation on a cruise ship. So, so our customer satisfaction uh, ratio is very high. We, we get very few complaints and, uh, and they're generally pleasantly surprised and feel like they will see a lot of value for their dollars once they close with us. Well, that's been exactly our reaction for people we've sent, where you know they're going in, they think, ah, oh, it's a smaller ship, I'm used to an Oasis or something, and then they, they go on, and they tell me, I've heard you know, that, I think the steakhouse on board, someone said that was the best meal they'd ever had on a cruise ship. They had, yeah, I mean, the service has been amazing. So yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm very excited to see, you know, as our business grows with you, which it has been a lot, I'm excited to, hear more of that and then I'm excited about the future with with your cruise line where do you see it going over the next three five five years do you foresee adding more ships and more ports or what what do you see as the uh, no we, we definitely we are a very growth minded company and that's that's our plan and aim that we want to develop the short cruising market further and we want to develop cruise and stay further and uh and we, our aim would be at least to add a few more ships in, in the next few years because we really believe there's a market. And uh, and we are, as we grow and as we brand and as we spend more money on marketing and as more and more people know us, they, they are realizing that they, this is a great value product. You cannot cruise on any ship, leave on Friday and be back on Sunday, especially for working class people who for limited with time, and and be it winters in New York, for example, Florida and West Palm Beach is so well connected. You take a mid mid afternoon flight on Friday and you're back to work on Monday. And you escape the winters. Uh, I mean, we naturally we get a lot of local business because it's so convenient and very affordable and very high on value because if you're living within 100, 200 miles of our port and you can just drive down, I mean, and you do the math, you're better off on the ship with your two kids. Right. <laughs> and <stay> home. Right. <laughs> by, the time, by the time you're done, because, you know, I, uh, we are affording you a nice five, ten, 10 meals in two days per person. You've got to get entertainment. Uh, you go to Bahamas and 
and all that. And if you put that on a paper, I think the decision to make the decision is not that difficult. No, absolutely. And now that I've I've got three young kids, and I think cruising is the absolute best vacation you can do with kids because you know they're not going anywhere. I mean, they're <laughs> they're they're going to be on the ship. So I I love it. One of the things what we have also done is uh, that even though we are a short cruise, we're also trying to to see how can we make it more convenient, let's say for parents or or a solo passenger. As you probably know, you might have read, uh, we are the only cruise line that recently came out uh, with a program that if you're a solo traveler, you no more have to pay for the second passenger in the cabin, we typically the, how the cruise industry works is that every cabin you have to pay based on double occupancy, even if you're a solo traveler, apart from a few cabins here and there. But we came out with the policy that okay, if you're solo, we're not going to penalize you. You're solo, you just pay for yourself. So we are we are we are trying to be very efficient. And same same with families, right? We came out with a program for our, for our families. Like at six o'clock, our youth staff and counsel, youth counselors who are very well trained and qualified, uh, you can leave your kids with them and pick them up at midnight. And they'll take care of them. You know, they'll have dinner with them. They'll have games with them, so that the parents get some quality time. And we are doing this because we are we are kind of expanding the market for the industry as well, because of the first time cruises and people who just want to test the cruise or as I keep repeating the getaway people, we want to make people feel that hey it's two nights but you know what there's much more to it than what you can get in two nights. There's really a lot of stuff going on. That's yeah, I, I mean I. I keep saying it, but like I just love your business model, and it's so cool that because you are actually you're getting the the first time cruiser, so you've got a chance to kind of shape that relationship. And as your brand grows, I imagine you know if you wanted to extend longer cruises, you could because you have that relationship or um, open new ports or whatever. But I just I love what you guys are doing. And then I, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the casino since you are comped is obviously we. Uh, I'd say every one of our customers are casino customers. So you guys have obviously uh, invested a lot in the casino. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you guys have done in the casino to make sure that that is, um, is going to meet and exceed customers' expectations and sort of how you think about the casino and in, in the business? We have, uh, of course, uh, just like everything else on our ship, we have VR. We put a lot of emphasis on each and every stream so that we are not neglecting anybody. Uh, we have really revamped our casinos. Uh, we have changed the slot machines on both the ships. They are like as good or as popular as you find them anywhere else. Uh, we have uh, uh, introduced a new player tracking system so that we are able to incentivize our players and our customers that if they come back or 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 even if we have to do some partnerships with other casinos. So as a small cruise line, we really didn't need to go that far, but we did because as I keep repeating, we we want people to f- feel that they're on a top class ship, top class product, and they're not being left out on any front. So so investment into the new machines, uh, new player tracking system, and we have remapped our management a little bit, and we are working on a lot of programs with with people like you and companies like you as well to expand our reach. So, and as a cruise line, as you know, we have all the amenities that most of our uh, customers and most of the uh, people who want to go to a casino would want. Like we have suites for them, we have specialty restaurants for them, we treat everybody nice, but including them. So we are going to roll out some programs to enhance uh, the offering, which means start like a players club based on your player tracking system points, provide you some more amenities. Uh, we have also increased the limits on a lot of games. Typically, we were we were a little lower historically, but now we we are up there. And the feedback we're getting from our players is awesome. 
uh, except we also got one negative feedback that there was one old slot machine there when one of our passengers really liked. Oh, no. <laughs> kind of got swept away with the new ones, and he was not very happy. <laughs> well, I'm sure like ships, she could buy it secondhand somewhere. She could play it in her garage all she wants. So we are looking into that because, as I said, we this is another benefit of a small cruise line that the interaction is at a higher level. So even I know that there is an upset customer who, who was looking for an old machine and <laughs> we'll make it up to him. <laughs> well, Neil, this has been so fascinating. Thank you for being so generous with your time and telling us all about your cruise line, your background. I, I've thoroughly enjoyed this. I know everybody that watches this will. Is there anything that we, uh, we didn't cover that you, you want us to know about before we end this? No, but uh, the only thing I can say is like, apart from the uniqueness of our cruise and the program we program we mentioned, our our cruise also offers again from your from the casino players perspective because most of the people watching this are 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 are, are casino players. Is that uh, sometimes uh, you're short on time. We also have a flexibility that probably no one else has is that if you go to Freeport and you're really short on time, if you want, you can get off and get on a plane and be back wherever you want. So if timing is critical for you, we not, you don't even have to be there for two nights. So that's as close as it kind of gets to a land-based casino wherein the only freedom, the better freedom is, is probably one of the plus of being on land, like you can come and leave any time. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so this is this is as close as it gets, and uh, and and I think it's only a matter of time when most of your database and most of your people will experience our ships. Uh, but they would. I'm pretty confident they'll be pleasantly surprised and awed. But our ships have absolutely every amenity and the experience is no different than any other cruise ship even though it's a small short two-night cruise and uh, uh, as you mentioned our food we take it great pride in our service and food and hospitality on board uh, we, we get glowing reviews about all that all the time yes there are people who sometimes we are not able to satisfy as they would expect but uh, but given the statistics, I believe we're we're doing very well on that that front, and and most of the people who come cruise with us leave very satisfied. Yeah, and we've had we've even had people that booked back to back cruises because they were they enjoyed it so much that two days wasn't enough or two nights. And, and also for your people uh, or for our, our viewers, you know, we have two ships. They say change your luck a little bit sometimes, right? You, you go on one ship one week, and next time you can check out another ship. And as you know, we what I've been told and uh, is that we are the only cruise ship on which not we are not the only cruise ship, but but if you like the game of craps, you can only find it on our ship in the state of Florida, or on the cruise ships. So so that's a plus. And and given our location in Palm Beach. There's a huge market north between Canaveral and Palm Beach that's within our driving distance. And we're not really competing with anybody. And, and, uh, and of course, our local market in Broward and, and West Palm uh, is as convenient as it gets. Well, I love it. I'm, I can't wait to see how this grows. I can't wait to keep getting these positive reviews from UR Comp customers that go on your ships. And, uh, and I, I'm excited to hopefully interview you again when, when you're announcing more ships coming online. <laughs> Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate your time. Oh, no, I appreciate yours. Thanks so much, O'Neill.